good Wednesday evening. Thank you so much for being here tonight. Let's all stand together, if you will. Page number 216, Dwelling in Beulah Land. We're going to do first, third, and fourth verses together tonight. We're kind of spread out, so lift your voices. Sing with us tonight, if you will. Far away the noise of strife upon my ear is falling. Then I know sins of earth be set on every hand doubt and fear and things of earth do me and we are calling none of these shall move me from Beulah land I'm living on the mountain underneath the cloudless stormy breezes blow their cry cannot alarm thee I am safely sheltered here protected by God's hand here the sun is always shining here there's naught can harm me I am safe tonight you may be seated good to see you on this Wednesday night thank you so much for being here about uh, about six o'clock my wife and I had just sat down to eat dinner at the little Mexican place up here and pastor called me and said hey brother I just sat down in my office and he said I don't feel good and he said this is how I feel when I don't feel well and so he asked me to fill in for him tonight, and I'm honored to do that. So pray for our pastor, if you will. And uh, everybody is trying to be cautious right now. I'm sure you got to call them all today. And we've got a family in our church that's kind of quarantining, and they haven't got any results back, but everybody's just trying to be cautious. Again, as pastor says, not fearful, but cautious. And uh, so pray for them, if you will. And uh, it's good to see you tonight at church. Thank you so much for being here. And we'll make the best of it, okay? I always hated it. Um, I always hate it when the pastor's not here. And uh, he's not gone very often, but when he's not here, it's just a different spirit. But I'm thankful that you're here tonight, and the Lord's here. And he said where two or three are gathered together in his name that he's in the midst. And uh, we want to allow him to work tonight. But again, thank you for being here. want to welcome you tonight on this Wednesday night, our young people. Um, 
are, there's just a few of them here tonight, so they've joined us over here, and uh, so I hope they'll enjoy the service as well this evening. Our juniors are over there meeting already tonight and their program, so let's pray for them, if you will. And uh, it doesn't take much anymore to get me out of breath, so I'm, I'm still trying to catch my breath from the first song, but it'll catch up here with me in just a moment, okay? So, uh, but I'm going to ask Brother Haynes more, if you don't mind, would you come up here and pray for us tonight? I'm going to have him open in a word of prayer, and uh, just ask the Lord to be with us tonight and bless this service. And uh, we want the Lord to meet with us tonight. Don't want this just to be another Wednesday night service, but I want the Lord to meet with us tonight. And I need something from the Word of God. And I want to share with you what the Lord has put on my heart. And so I hope that will help us tonight. So, uh, Brother Moore, if you will, pray, pray for us. Our Heavenly Father, we come to you tonight in the precious name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. We thank you for your love for us. Thank you for your mercy upon us. Thank you for all that you mean to us. Thank you for working in our hearts and lives. Father, we come to you on behalf of our pastor now that you bring about healing there. That you restore in the full measure of health again. Bless him and his family. Minister to every need there. Father, we pray for the couple that have the COVID, that you would work in a very special way in their lives, that you would bring about uh, complete recovery, total healing there, and restore them to full health again so they can be back in your house again. Father, we pray for each one who's here tonight, that you would bless in a very special way in each heart and life. But we pray for Brother Steve as he preaches tonight, that you would give him liberty that you would anoint him afresh with your Holy Spirit, minister to his needs, and use him to minister to our needs this evening. Thank you for what you're going to do in this service. We pray that you'd bless each one of us, minister to us, and meet every need of our lives this evening. We pray for the youth groups across this uh, way there, that you would bless them, that you would minister to every need. Pray for their leaders, give them wisdom, and help them to be able to uh, teach the Word of God in such a way that the uh, kids will understand and apply it to their lives and uh, become more like you because they've been together there this evening bless again in this service meet our every need and we'll love and thank you for it for we ask it in jesus precious name and for his sake amen amen thank you brother moore thank you so much for praying with us i failed to welcome those who are watching online tonight and i'm sure there's many that are watching online so thank you so much for being with us tonight as well by the computer and we appreciate that how many of you had a long day today all right over half it just seemed like a long day today but i appreciate you making an effort to get to church tonight and i'm sure our pastor appreciates that as well you'll never know what an encouragement just you being here is to our pastor even when he's not here because he knows you put a priority on church and that means a lot to him so thank you again for being here tonight Remain seated, if you will. We're going to sing together the chorus, Learning to Lean, Learning to Lean on Jesus, Finding More Power Than I've Ever Dreamed, Learning to Lean on Jesus. singing with us tonight. Let me go over just a few announcements, if you will. I'm going to put my glasses on so I can see them here. But uh, upcoming events, things we've got going on over the next few days. First of all, offering will be taken at the end of service tonight. Wednesday night offering goes to missions. Amen. So be faithful in giving tonight to our missions program. And uh, my wife 
and her family, they were missionaries to Italy for years. And uh, they would tell you, her dad would tell you this of a surety, they always appreciated the financial support, but there was nothing like somebody telling you that they were praying for you. And um, our missionaries face a lot on the foreign fields now. And uh, so let's pray for them, if you will, and uh, be willing to give tonight at the end of service. Also, outreach cards. Don't forget to, to grab some outreach cards, put in your pocket, and uh, carry those with you. You never know when you're going to have an opportunity to give one out, leave it at the gas station or the grocery store, or be able to hand it to somebody and that will be a blessing as well. And then let me go over these upcoming events. First of all, the sign up for the summer ladies meeting. That is next Thursday at 7 p.m. And I know our ladies are looking forward to that. They've got a group, a good group that signed up for that. And they'll have a great time, I'm sure. And then this coming Saturday morning at 9.30 a.m. And unless you hear otherwise, our visitation and outreach program. And they'll be going out whether it's rain or shine. So if you're able to be there, I know that'll be a blessing as well. Be able to go out and spread the gospel, hand out gospel tracts, and uh, knock on doors and be a witness to folks in our community. There's so many that have not heard about the Lord, and we want to take this opportunity to share the gospel of Jesus Christ with them. And then this coming Saturday night, men's prayer at 8 p.m. Don't forget that, men at 8 p.m. this coming Saturday evening, as well as every Saturday evening for our men's prayer meeting. And then we're excited about the Lord's Day. Uh, my previous pastor used to say all the time, he said, great Sundays begin on Mondays. And you can't wait till Saturday night, really, to start praying for the Lord to show up on Sunday. You've got to start working on Monday and work every day and pray every day and ask God every day to give us a good service on Sunday. And so we're certainly looking forward to that. I hope you're prayed up and ready for what God is going to do this coming Lord's Day. And we're looking forward to those services this coming Sunday. Had a great time this past Sunday night. And uh, the hot dogs and the ice cream were just great as usual. And uh, we had some, I mean, some really extravagant gifts given out for door prizes. And uh, those were so exciting. I'm glad for those who were able to win those. I hate I missed out. But uh, congratulations to all the winners of that. And that was a great time, of course. I appreciate our pastor putting those together for us. Just for our young people, don't forget our next Glow at the O is on the 29th, that's, uh, that's a week from Sunday night. And we'll be going over to Dario after church on Sunday night and uh, just kind of crashing their party over there. And uh, uh, it's a good opportunity for us just to let the community know that we have a youth program here and our young people love the Lord and they wanna share Temple Baptist Church with our community. So pray for that if you will as well. Okay, would you stand with us one more time tonight? One more time. My Lord knows the way through the wilderness. All I have to do is follow. Amen. Let's sing that together. My Lord knows the way through the wilderness. All I have to do is follow. My Lord knows the way through the wilderness. All I have to do is follow. Strength for today. take this opportunity we're not going to have any physical contact tonight but you can wave at somebody turn around and wave at the cameras too for those that are watching online and uh, you can walk around and fellowship tonight just ask you to refrain from shaking hands My Lord knows the way through the wilderness. 
As usual, we'll have prayer time at the end of service tonight, so we've not given our prayer request up front, and we'll have a time to do that at the end of the service tonight. And again, I want to thank you for being here this evening. I want to, uh, I want to do something that's unusual for you. This is Wednesday night, and we have a routine uh, in our team meeting on Wednesday nights. We have Bible trivia every Wednesday night. Matter of fact, every Wednesday night and every Sunday morning, uh, we have Bible trivia, and um we have blue cards, which are easy, and then we have white cards, which are not so easy. All right, so we're going to test your trivia knowledge tonight just for a few minutes here. Just bear with me, if you will. You say, this is silly. Well, it may be, but it's what we do on Wednesday night, so we're going to, we're going to have fun uh, tonight, if you don't mind. So uh, just if you know the answer, just blurt it out. You don't have to raise your hand. All right, you don't get a prize. You just get to be smart. Okay, all right, so question number one, what relative of Moses made a golden calf while Moses was on Mount Sinai? Aaron, good job, all right, good. All right, question number two, um, which one of the following men was a prophet of God? Was it Ahab, Adam, or Amos? Amos, good, good job. All right, what relative was Martha of Mary? Sister. Sister. Oh, you guys are smart. These are too easy. Let's see. Um, how many of the disciples were at dinner when Jesus appeared to them after his resurrection? Eleven. <laughs> All of them, yeah. All eleven. All right, good. <laughs> Always a smart one in the bunch, I tell you what. <laughs> uh, all right. Which book in the Bible suggested that the world was round centuries before scientists proved it? Very good, Isaiah. All right. Man. All right. What weapon did David use to knock down Goliath? Sling. Sling and a stone. All right. Um, who was Solomon's father? David. David. All right. We'll do a couple more easy ones. I'm going to have to give you all some hard ones. Let's see. Let's see. The wise men brought three kinds of gifts to baby Jesus, gold, frankincense, and myrrh. myrrh. Okay. Y'all are in for it now. Let's see. <laughs> all right. What, from what country did Solomon get the timber to build the temple at Jerusalem? Lebanon. Very good. All right. Okay. Whom did God strike with leprosy for only a few minutes? Moses. Moses, just for a few minutes. And the other answer was right, too. It's just a different time. Um... After how many days did the spies sent out by Moses to search the land of Canaan return? Forty. Very good. Forty. All right. I got to find a really hard one here. Let's see. Over what land was Ahasuerus king? Persia. Who said Persia? Good job, brother. Yeah. Brother Lewis. All right. <laughs> um, let's see here. Um, who ate a book which tasted as sweet as honey, yet made his belly bitter? Any 
Anybody? He ate a book which tasted as sweet as honey, yet made his belly bitter. It's in the book of Revelation. It was not John the Baptist, but it was John. John the Revelator. All right. John the Revelator. Good. All right. A couple more, and then uh, we'll get into the message tonight. Which book in the Bible immediately precedes Jonah? You've got to know what precedes mean means to get it right. Obadiah. Good. All right. Last one. Last one here. According to 1 Corinthians 2.14... And after I'm done with the question, you can actually turn to it and cheat if you want to. According to 1 Corinthians 2.14, to what kind of man do the things of the Spirit seem to be foolishness? Yeah, natural man, man without the Spirit. All right, good job on Bible trivia tonight. Y'all did well. And uh, I want you to turn in your Bibles, if you will, to the book of Colossians. Book of Colossians. Colossians chapter number 1. This is not going to be a rip, snort, and shouting message tonight. It's going to be more of a instructional message, but I hope it'll help you. It has certainly helped me in my Christian life, and I want to share it with you tonight if I can. Colossians chapter number one. Colossians one. We're going to read down through verse number fourteen. Colossians chapter one. Down through verse number fourteen. All right. Here's what the Bible says. Of course, the Apostle Paul is writing here. He said, Paul, an apostle of Jesus Christ, by the will of God, and Timothy is our brother, to the saints and faithful brethren in Christ which are at Coloss. Grace be unto you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. We give thanks to God and the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, praying always for you, since we heard of your faith in Christ Jesus and of the love which ye have to all the saints. For the hope which is laid up for you in heaven, whereof ye heard before in the word of truth of the gospel, which is come unto you as it is in all the world, and bringeth forth fruit as it doth also in you since the day ye heard of it and knew the grace of God in truth. As ye also learned of Epaphras, our dear fellow servant, who is for you a faithful minister of Christ, who also declared unto us your love in the Spirit. For this cause... We also, since the day we heard it, do not cease to pray for you and to desire that ye might be filled with the knowledge of his will in all wisdom and spiritual understanding, that ye might walk worthy of the Lord unto all pleasing, being fruitful in every good work and increasing in the knowledge of God, strengthened with all might, according to his glorious power, unto all patience and long suffering with joyfulness, giving thanks unto the Father which hath made us meet to be partakers of the inheritance of the saints in light, who hath delivered us from the power of darkness and hath translated us into the kingdom of his dear Son, in whom we have redemption through his blood, even the forgiveness of sins. Go back up to verse number 10, if you will, first part of that verse, and it says that ye might walk worthy of the Lord, unto all pleasing our father i pray that you'll help us tonight please give us something from your word it's not so important what i say tonight but your word is what's valuable your word is what's rich your word is what is powerful it tells us that it's sharper than any two-edged sword lord and it can pierce it can convict it can encourage it can challenge it can strengthen we thank you for your word tonight. Lord, I pray that you'll use me as your servant. And Lord, I pray that you'll give me what I need to say tonight. I don't want to say anything more or anything less than what I should say tonight. But I pray that you'll give us something. Strengthen us tonight. Lord, give us something from your word that will help us in the days ahead. We ask all this in Jesus' name. Amen. Verse number 10 says that ye might walk worthy of the Lord unto all pleasing i got to be honest with you, every time I read 
a passage of scripture in the Bible, and this is not the only place that the Bible says to walk worthy of something. There's another place that says to walk worthy of the vocation wherewith you're called. And it's always bothered me a little bit because I know how unworthy I am. I realize that when I, I measure my life up against the Word of God, I realize how unworthy I truly am. I'm thankful tonight we're made worthy by the blood of Jesus Christ. I'm thankful that I can go to the Father. I've got access to the throne of God because of Jesus Christ and the blood that He shed for me. But still, the thought always goes through my mind, how can I walk worthy of anything having to do with the Lord? And I want to share some things with us tonight that, that helped me as I was studying this out, and, and I hope it will help you as well. And If I could title this, I would just title it Five Simple Principles to Dwell On this week. Five Simple Principles to Dwell On. Now, I know we're midway through the week. Wednesday nights for me are always a, a battery charger. We've got a battery charger over here. And we have rechargeable batteries. And um, every week, we'll, we'll take the batteries out of the microphone, we'll put them on the charger, and they'll, they'll, they'll charge. They'll be ready to go. They're fully charged for the next time we're ready to use them. And Wednesday nights are like that for me because when I have been around the world for the first two and a half, you know, first two and a half days, three days of the week, by the time I get to church on Wednesday night, i got to be honest with you, I need church. I just need church. And a lot of times I need my batteries charged. So I want this to be a battery charger tonight. I want it to be something that will help you that you can carry with you the rest of the week. But five simple principles to dwell on the rest of this week and to help us to walk worthy of the Lord unto all pleasing. In other words, how are we going to be a Christian? How are we going to act how, in front of other people? Can we, can we walk worthy of this, this title that we've been given? How can I be a Christian? Well, let me share these with you tonight. First of all, I want to mention we can walk worthy by letting the Holy Spirit control our life. Allowing the Holy Spirit of God to control our life. You say, well, uh, that's easy. Not really. As I preached last time I, I had the opportunity to preach, I mentioned that when I wake up in the morning, I am in a fight. I'm in a battle every single day of my life. As soon as I wake up in the morning, I'm battling the flesh. And the flesh wants to take over. The flesh wants to be in control. There are things that I want to do to satisfy the flesh, but I need to allow the Holy Spirit of God to control my life. Romans chapter 8, if you'll turn over there with me, Romans chapter number 8, and I want to share some verses with you. These are so good. Romans chapter number 8 and verse number 5. Romans chapter 8, verse number 5. I'll wait just a moment till you get there. Romans chapter 8, verse number 5. The Bible says this, For they that are after the flesh do mind the things of the flesh, but they that are after the Spirit, the things of the Spirit. Well, that makes sense, doesn't it? If I am looking after the things of the flesh, that, that's what I'm going to follow after. If I want to follow the Spirit, that's what I'm going to follow after. Those are the things I think about. For to be carnally minded is death, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace. Because the carnal mind is enmity against God. For it is not subject to the law of God, neither indeed can be. So then they that are in the flesh cannot please God. Now wait a second. We read over in Colossians that we're to walk worthy unto God, unto all pleasing. All right, so how are we going to do that? We've got to walk in the Spirit. Verse number 7 again, because the carnal mind is enmity against God, for it is not subject to the law of God, neither indeed can be, so then they that are in the flesh cannot please God. But you are not in the flesh, but in the Spirit. So if so be that the Spirit of God dwell in you. So if the Spirit of God dwells in us, if when we got saved, the Holy Spirit of God came to indwell us, right? But just because the Holy Spirit of God came to indwell me when I got saved doesn't mean that I allow him to have control of my life every day. I can just tell you, i got to be honest with you tonight, it is a battle, it's a constant battle to allow the Holy Spirit to control my life. So what are some ways that we can allow the Holy Spirit to control our life on a daily basis? Let me say, number one, in our preparation for the day. As soon as we get up in the morning... We ought to immediately say, okay, 
God, I want you to have control of my life because we wake up in a battle and we've got to make a choice. And if you don't make the choice, guess who's going to win? The flesh is always going to win if you don't make a choice. So we have to choose on a daily basis to prepare to allow the Holy Spirit to control our life. Number one, in our preparation for the day, in our reading. Do you realize that it's not just natural for us just to wake up in the morning and want to read the Bible? Now, I'm hungry for the, for the Word of God as a child of God, but I don't always want to read the Bible. Now, I'm being transparent as I can tonight. I'm trying to, to give you my spiritual walk and what my life is like on a daily basis. But I don't always want to get up in the morning and read the Bible. Sometimes I'm running late. Sometimes I'm really tired. Sometimes I sit down to read the Bible and I start falling asleep. It's not always easy to read the Bible, but I understand that if I don't get in the Word of God, the Holy Spirit won't, he won't have control of my life. I have to have spiritual food. If we don't eat in our flesh, we get hungry, right? Stomach starts growling. Some of us get hangry. We start getting grumpy and ill with other people because we haven't eaten. Well, as the child of God, we ought to be hungry for spiritual things. And we've got to feed our spirit. And the only way to do that is with the Word of God. We've got to prepare for the day by reading. Secondly, in our preparation for the day, not only in reading, but in prayer. Prayer. I would say, and I think I'm pretty close on this, but I would say the most underutilized thing in a child of God's life is prayer. Prayer. I would have to say that the thing in my life that would make the most significant difference is the thing that I often shove to the side because I don't have time. I'll go about my day and I'll, I'll get up in the morning and I'll read my Bible. I'll make that choice and, and I'll, start, I'll start praying. I'll start talking to God and then a thought will enter my mind about something going on at work. And I'll start thinking about that thing going on at work. And before you know it, my mind is a million miles away from talking to God. The devil is a mastermind at, at, at distracting us. Now, I'm of the persuasion that the devil can't read my mind. God can. He knows everything. The devil, I don't believe, can read your mind. But he also knows when you're trying to pray. And he also knows how to distract you and bring things in your way. In your phone, you'll get a text or somebody will call you or you'll get an email. Something to distract you from doing what you need to do. And when we're preparing for the day, if the Holy Spirit's going to control our life, we have to read, we have to pray. We must, we must. So allowing the Holy Spirit to control our life, first of all, in our reading, in our prayer, how about this? How about in our dress? That's important. You say, oh, no, he's getting on standards now. Not really. All I'm saying is we ought to care what the Holy Spirit thinks about what we wear. Am I right? Absolutely. He cares. He cares about everything about us. So when we're preparing for the day, we ought to read the right things, we ought to pray, and we ought to wear the right things. Dress for success. And I, I'm not even necessarily talking about modesty. I just think a child of God ought to look like a child of God. That's all I'm saying. All right? I'm not meddling tonight. I'm just saying a, a Christian ought to look like a Christian. Okay? So in, uh, allow the Holy Spirit to be in control of our life in our preparation for the day. Secondly, allow the Holy Spirit to be in, be in control of our life in our attitude. Our attitude. I saw a meme on Facebook yesterday, and it was so good. And it, it showed a picture of Barney. You know Barney the dinosaur? All right, y'all know, know who Barney is. I love you, you love me. Yeah, that Barney. Real nice dinosaur. And it showed a picture of Barney the dinosaur, and the, the person said, uh, me, when I have making, made the choice to be nice to people at work or something like that, to start my day. And then it, it showed a picture. It said an hour later, and it showed a picture of the T-Rex in Jurassic Park, right? Yeah, chewing up the tires. That's how it is sometimes, right? 
Man, we, we start out the day and we have the right attitude and the right mindset and we're, we're allowing the Holy Spirit to control our mind and our life and we get to work or we get to, to, to wherever we're going and we start the day out and something happens and it isn't long before everything changes and our, our day is turned upside down. That's life. That's what happens. But we've got to control our spirit, our attitude, our mindset. And if we allow the Holy Spirit to control our life, he'll help us with that. I promise you will. So allowing the Holy Spirit to control us in our preparation for the day and our attitude. Uh, Thirdly, in our communication. Our communication. We have got to be careful with not only what we say, but how we say it. Do you realize that you can tell somebody you love them and be hateful about it? I love you. Well, I love you too. So, so how we say things sometimes is more valuable than, than what we say. I've heard this before, and I hope I get this right. But people will not always remember what you said to them, but they'll always remember how you made them feel. Am I close to that? You know the quote I'm talking about. People, people will remember how you made them feel. What kind of expression do we have to other people? How do we act and how do we react? Our lives are made up probably 75% of reactions, not actions, but reactions. I can set out my day and I can have the attitude, the mindset, and following the Holy Spirit of God and allowing him to be in control of my life and my mind. And I'll set out my day and I'm doing well and, and my actions are good and my attitude is good. And then something happens And if I'm not careful how I react to a situation, it can change everything. It sure can. Allowing the Holy Spirit to be in control of our life and our preparation for the day and our attitude and our communication. Fourthly, and by the way, after I get through point number one, the other four are really quick. Fourthly, in our work habits. Our work habits. How many in here have jobs? All right. All right. Good. In our work habits. I just wrote these things down, and these are things that that I try to think about that will help me. Number one, I need to be consistent. Now, I have the opportunity, I have the privilege to work for a Christian boss, and I'm blessed with that. But in some ways, I feel like I owe even more to my Christian boss because he is somebody that loves the Lord, and he's a brother in Christ. And I want to be consistent in my work. I want to be consistent. Not only do I want to be consistent, but I want to be efficient. Nothing tears me up any more than seeing somebody burn the clock, eat the clock, waste the clock. And you can call it what you want to, but that's stealing. That's just stealing. Uh, Consistent in my work ethic. Efficient. Quality. Giving quality work. Being ethical. Being upfront. Being honest. Maybe some of this doesn't relate to everybody that's here tonight, but if we're going to allow the Holy Spirit to control our life, we've got to allow him to control us in our work habits, every single area of our life. Number five, allowing him to control us in our family relationships. I have to learn this, and I think all of us need to learn it, that have jobs and have families. No work is for work, home is for home. I've seen a lot of families destroyed in my life because they couldn't leave work at work. And they would bring work home and you would have conflicts and or or the the person would sit at home and do work and work all the way up through the night and never pay attention to the family. And before you knew it, the, the family's gone. Work is for work, home is for home. So in our family relationships, allowing the Holy Spirit to control our life. And then finally, in our preparation to end the day. And this is what I mean by that. Allowing the Holy Spirit to control us in how we prepare for the next day. Everybody ought to have goals. Now, I'm, I'm a little bit, a lot, OCD. Um, at work, if you, if you go to work, you ask my wife, because she works with me, and if you ask, if, matter of fact, if you saw this pulpit tonight, you would see up here there's a piece of paper and there's a pen and it's sitting just like this. And my glasses are laying, oops, just like that, just, just like that, and this paper just like this. 
And if somebody moves that or causes it to be crooked, it'll drive me crazy. If that clock on the wall was crooked in the back, it would drive me crazy. I'm OCD at work. And then my wife, I, I get home, and my wife says, hmm, you're OCD at work, but when you get home, you just throw your stuff everywhere. <laughs> Why can't you be OCD at home? Why can't you put your clothes away? Why can't you put your shoes up? I don't know. I don't have an answer for that yet. <laughs> yes, it is selective. And I don't know why I said all that. But I was talking about organization. I think we ought to be organized in our life. Anybody that is haphazard is not being led by the Holy Spirit because God says, let all things be done decently and in order. And when we're preparing for the next day, when we're preparing for what's ahead, we ought to allow the Holy Spirit to control us. All right, so number one, first principle to dwell on this week, allow the Holy Spirit to control our life. Number two, the rest of these will go quickly. Number two, think of others more than yourself. Think of others more than yourself. We live in a me society, don't we? We live in a society that is looking out for themselves it's all about me it's all about what makes me feel better um at the grocery store the other day and i we were we were coming down an aisle we were following this this car and there was another car that had pulled up here the parking place over here this car had their blinker on waiting for somebody to walk by and they were going to pull in that parking place well the guy that was in front of me it's not christmas i mean it's august the guy that's in front of me just, just pulls right in the parking place. Just selfish. People, people don't care. They're selfish. And I think if there's ever a day and time that the child of God ought to be thinking about other people, I think that there's ever a time that we ought to be showing the love of Jesus Christ, it ought to be right now. Our world is craving for the love of Jesus Christ. We have the answer. We, we've got the goods. We've got everything they need. Are we willing to share it and give it? Think of others more than ourselves. Paul said this, this great verse. He said, I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live. Yet not I, but Christ that liveth in me. I, I have to wake up every day with a real realization that I need to die to myself. I need to forget about what is for my own good. See, we, again, we live in a society of self-satisfaction. Build yourself up. And look, there's nothing, wrong with, there's, there's nothing wrong with understanding how good God has been to you and using your gifts for the Lord. But we ought to be using those things to help other people. It's not about self-satisfaction, self-gratification. It's not about self-elevation. The Bible says he must increase, but I must decrease. Think of others more than ourselves. Again, just, just five simple principles generosity humility i think about people in my life that made the biggest difference and I, i'm going to say this and i'm going to move on the people in my life that made the biggest difference were those that gave me their time my youth pastor and i'm, I'm just going to mention a few here that made a huge difference in my life my youth pastor when i was growing up was steve robertson many of you know him steve robertson made a huge difference in my life and this was, he was, he was a great youth pastor, and he was traveling all the time, was preaching all the time, but any time he was home and he was with the youth group, he just always made me feel special, always made me feel important. He gave me his time. One of my teachers in high school, matter of fact, the, the, the teacher that encouraged me to start singing, Tim Hicks, man, he, he loved the Lord, and he loved me as a young person, and he gave me his time. And he made a huge difference in my life. Um, my mom and dad, mom and dad, they gave me their time. You say, oh, well, they're, mom and dad, they're supposed to. Well, not every mom and dad does. But my mom and dad loved me. They gave me their time. It was valuable. My life was valuable to them. They thought of me instead of thinking of themselves. And then finally, I've mentioned this guy's name before, but I had a friend in high school. His name was Brian Dunbar. And this was a guy that was in a grade higher than I was, but he thought enough about me to give me his time. I'm just saying tonight, if we're going to make a difference in other people's lives, 
We're going to have to give them of our time. Think of others more than yourself. Number three, express joy. Express joy. Our world right now don't have a lot to be happy about. And i got to be honest with you, if I, if I were to sit down every morning and every afternoon and turn on the news and watch the news, I'd be miserable too. There's, there's really not a lot worth seeing. They take everything and put a negative spin on it. And they do that because they realize that, that the, the natural man, our flesh, craves negative. We, we just crave it. And we'll say to ourselves, oh, that's terrible. I can't believe that's happening. And our flesh is just gobbling it up. But we like it. The, the worse it is, the more we like it. And you can, you can say what you want to, but that is how the flesh works. Because the flesh is not saved. Our spirit's saved, but flesh is not saved. And it craves all of that negative, that negative attention. The world's looking for joy. And we have it. Amen? You say, what do we have to be joyful about? Number one, we have freedom in Jesus Christ. We've been saved by the grace of God. That's enough to make us happy. I hope you never allow a day to go by that you don't thank the Lord for saving your soul. Because God's been awfully good to us. We deserve to be burning in hell. So we have freedom in Jesus Christ. We have power over Satan. I, I have good news tonight. We don't have to sin. You say, oh, well, we was born into sin. We, it's just, we, we just sin, but we don't have to. Since I got saved, Jesus gave me the power to overcome sin. I don't have to. That's something to be joyful about. And then I'm, I, I thought this, we have a life worth living I know so many people and I'm, I'm almost done I know so many people that are destitute they're depressed they're discouraged they're defeated they're beat down and the reason they are is because they don't have hope in Jesus Christ but we do we have hope in Jesus Christ and I realize I understand we live in the same world that they do but the difference is we've got the answer. We've got the author of joy, and that's Jesus Christ, and he's living on the inside of us. If we'll allow the Holy Spirit to control our life, we'll express joy. And number four, realize that we have a ministry that was received from God. When Paul got saved on the road to Damascus, he, he asked two questions. He said, who art thou, Lord? And then he said, what do you want me to do? Okay, he got saved, and then he said, what do you want me to do? And I want to say tonight that everybody in this room that's been saved has got something to do. It doesn't matter what it is. You know what your gift is. All of us have different talents. There's something that all of us can do, and God has given us a purpose. He's given us a ministry. And then finally, number five, be a witness. Be a witness. I think that if we're not careful... It's, it's a cop-out sometimes to say that I'm a witness because of my Christian life, okay? And we can be. It can be evident by how we, how we act and how we dress, how we react, how we associate with other people. All of that is an evidence of being saved. But if we're not careful, that will be a cop-out to actually doing something, and see, the truth is tonight, God didn't, he didn't call, he, he didn't save us to be. He saved us to do. Am I right? Yeah. He saved us to do. I'm thankful that when I accepted Jesus Christ as my Savior, and I became a child of God, that I became a Christian. I am a child of God, but I have a duty. He didn't save me to be, he saved me to do. Now the question is, how much are we really doing? I get it. I live the same life you do. Life is hard. Life is tough sometimes. We deal with tough things. We deal with troubles and anxieties and problems. But God has given us all something to do. So I think it's high time just as Christians we just do it. Amen? Five simple things principles. I know it's been long and a little bit lazy, 
but I hope it's helped you tonight. Let's all stand, heads bowed, eyes closed. Miss Kay's going to come to the piano. I want to give you an opportunity. You can stay there in your seat if you want to. You're always welcome to come to the altar, of course. And Maybe there's something in one of these points tonight that has drawn you, caused you to say, you know what, maybe I'm a little bit lax in that area. But I think if we were all honest tonight, we'd have to say that, that all of us could follow the Holy Spirit better. All of us could do more in that area because the flesh wants to take over. I hope we'll follow the Lord, follow the Holy Spirit as we should. so much for your patience tonight you can be seated and I want to go over these prayer requests here quickly and uh, just mention these things that we've got on the prayer list tonight of course remember those we've already mentioned tonight uh, those that are kind of self quarantine and then obviously remember our pastor and his family the Lord would touch them and uh, bless them bring them back very very quickly I always want to remember our shut-ins one of the things that, I, that has really hit me uh, during this time of COVID over the last year and a half is so many people that would love the opportunity to do what we've been able to do here and meet together. And uh, we never want to take that for granted. So let's remember our shut-ins, if you will. I know they would love to be here. We've already mentioned tonight to pray for our missionaries, but we want to continue to do that. And I want to encourage you, I have in my Bible, uh, I have a missionary's card. And I take that out every now and then, and I try to pray for that missionary specifically. It's easy to say, Lord, bless all the missionaries of the world. And he will, but I think he wants us to be specific as well. And it will help us in our, our Christian life. So pray for our missionaries, if you will. And then we need to pray for our country. Amen. Uh, we want to pray for our leaders. Whether you like them or not, we have a responsibility to pray for them and to ask God to give them wisdom and lift them up in prayer. And so let's pray for our country, of course, and then let's pray for those who are lost. I don't know, I, I don't think you would be here tonight if you were lost, but there may be somebody in this congregation tonight that's lost. But we need to pray for the lost. There are lost people in this community in walking distance that don't know the Lord Jesus Christ. Probably within a, probably within a rock's throw, you never know, that don't know the Lord. And we need to be praying for the lost that God would touch them. So let's remember them, if you will. And then let's pray for our churches in America. Temple Baptist Church is not the only good church, and I think it's the best. Um, I believe that, as our pastor said, it's the greatest church in the world. I think if, if people could ever just come here and just see it and just feel it and get in on the spirit, I, I, don't, I just think they would love it. It's the greatest church in the world. But we're not the only good church, and there's other churches out there that are preaching the gospel and trying to reach people we need to pray for those churches as well. And then I know that you know what's going on here. And uh, this, is not just, this is not just an area of gossip, but this is a real need. We need to pray for the country of Afghanistan. We need to pray for those people. And, um, you know, I, God can intervene. Nothing is too far gone as long as God is on the throne. Amen? And uh, so let's pray for them that God would be able to, to work in that situation over there bring our people home there's so many pastors over there the underground churches in afghanistan and and people that are trying to get out of there before the taliban takes over and so we we really need to pray for that country that god would work in that situation and then remember families in our church that are traveling 
and uh, that God would keep them safe, watch over them, and then remember our shut-ins, as I've already mentioned tonight. And then let me give you some specifics here. Um, Larry Bowles, we want to continue to remember him in prayer, and I thank God for what he's doing in his life. Let's continue to remember him. And then Brother Kenny Moore as well, remember him in prayer. And then um, we got a, uh, got a Facebook message, uh, Brother Matt Honey's family uh, that lives in California. Um, uh, his aunt and his uncle, I believe, their, their home was destroyed by fire. And they're just in a really bad situation out there. And um, so let's pray for his family, if you will. Also, I don't think it's any secret by now. So we're not spreading gossip here because I heard it from the horse's mouth. But it is the Honey family that are self-quarantining. I think you know that by now. So pray for their family and uh, that God would touch them and watch over them. That, that family is very precious to us and our church. And we thank the Lord for them. So pray for them, if you will. And then continue to remember Lawrence Miller in prayer, if you will. And I get to talk to Patricia every now and then about him. Brother Lawrence is a good man, and he loves the Lord, and he would love to be here if he could. So please remember him in prayer, if you will. Um, Faye Revis, um, this is Pastor's grandmother's sister. Is that correct? And she's, she's got cancer. Okay, all right. So let's remember her in prayer, if you will. And uh, that's Miss Gail's sister, remember her. And then Zora Mae Richardson's sister passed away this past Sunday. Please remember that family, if you will. And remember them in prayer. And then Miss Beverly Smith, uh, she's not able to be with us tonight. Remember her in prayer, if you will. Uh, the situation with her cancer, the Lord will give her answers and uh, things that she needs there. Larry Burton, um, has a brain tumor and uh, brother Frank this is this is somebody that you that you know is that is that correct okay 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 all right okay yes sir Okay. Okay. All right. Well, good. Good. I appreciate you letting us know that. So let's remember both of these, if you will, and um, and then let's remember Ricky Bennett. Um, this is a friend of Robert and Martha Church. This is a friend of theirs with COVID, and I remember them in prayer, if you will. And then um, a pastor had mentioned that he's got a couple sp special prayer requests he wanted to pray for. Let's do that tonight. Andrew Blake having shoulder surgery remember that in prayer if you will the doctors will have wisdom there uh, in that surgery and then uh brother tootie had a heart procedure you you've already had that right you have not had that okay okay all right well let's remember that in prayer if you will and the lord will touch him and give the doctors wisdom as well Wyatt Pendry, want to continue to remember him in prayer, if you will. And then Betty Danner, her son Mark, remember him in prayer. And uh, Miss Paige and Everly, and uh, be meeting her soon, right? Lord willing. I know Paige says yes, Lord willing, soon. Amen. And then uh, Vicki Cincinnati, her mother is in ICU. And we want to remember her in prayer, if you will. It's a ton of prayer requests. So. Um, if you don't have anything to pray about, I've just given you plenty, okay? So plenty of prayer requests here tonight. Let's do this tonight, if you don't mind. If you're able and can make it to the altar, why not, let's come around the altar tonight. And these are just, there's a lot of needs that we have. You can remain there in your seat if you want to. But uh, let's just get together and pray tonight. And uh, anybody that can join me up here, if you will, and let's just pray together and ask the Lord to be with us. Okay. All right. Ann Jackson's friend, Margie. All right. All right. Let's pray together. Our Father, we want to thank you for the privilege to come together tonight, Lord. I thank you for this church, and I thank you for our pastor and his leadership. 
for his, his compassion, for his desire to lead your people. God, I pray that you'll touch him tonight, give him strength and wisdom. Lord, I pray that you'll touch his body. Lord, I pray that you'd give him healing, help him to feel better, Lord, touch his health. I pray that you'd be with Miss Hannah and those children, Lord, watch over them, protect them, please keep them safe. Lord, just be with that family. And they're such a blessing to us, Lord, and, and we're honored to get to know them and to spend time with them. Lord, we're asking you just for your touch on them tonight. And then, Lord, I, I don't want to leave anybody out tonight. I, I, you know all the requests that were mentioned, and we won't take the time to go through all those again, but you know what they are. As a church, Lord, we believe in the power of prayer. And we understand that there is nothing that's too hard for you. There's nothing that we talk about tonight that made you scratch your head or, or bite your nails or, or upset your stomach. God, you already know the needs, and you've already got a solution to every problem. And that solution is not always what we want. And it's certainly not always done in the time that we want. But you have the solution. So I pray, Lord, that you'll give us grace and strength tonight. Give us, give us patience, please as we wait on the Lord, and Lord, allow you to do your work. What you do, you do best. And I've found in my life, Lord, that when I get in the way and I try to try to intervene, that I'll mess things up. So Lord, we just want to lay these things in your hand tonight, those that are sick. God, we, we ask you, please, we're casting our cares upon you. And you said that you care for us, and we believe that you do. So Lord, we're casting these things on you tonight. We are leaving these things at the altar tonight, and we're asking you to meet these needs according to your will. Lord, I pray for uh, Miss Ann's friend, Lord, that she just mentioned, and I pray that you'll touch her, Lord, as she's been admitted to the hospital. And uh, Again, I don't want to mention uh, individual ones, Lord, but I pray that you'll just meet the needs as you see fit. I thank you for this church, for this people. And Lord, the love they have for you and the love they have for one another and they love they have for this community and for our country. And Lord, I pray that you'll use us in the days ahead. I don't know how long it'll be before you come back, but Lord, I do believe it'll be soon. And I'm asking you to use us, Lord, in a great way. I pray that you'll help us, Lord, to allow you to have control of our life. And put you first in our life, Lord. Set up your kingdom. Have your will and way in our life. And be honored and pleased, Lord pray once again that you'll go with us now, Lord, watch over us and keep us safe. We don't take that for granted. Anytime we're able to travel up and down the road and go back and forth, we thank you for that protection, Lord. We ask you to keep your hand on us. Touch our church, Lord. Help us to grow spiritually, numerically, Lord. And I pray that you'll watch over us. Keep us safe, please, in the days ahead. Give us wisdom, please. In Jesus' name. Thank you so much, church. So as you're making your way back to your seat, you can get your belongings, and you are dismissed at this time. We'll see you next time, Lord willing.